Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. As you probably know, I'm a Canadian drone pilot and over the past year have offered dozens of videos detailing the 2019 Canadian RPAS regulations. So I have a very strong and deep understanding of how these rules work. I also have a passable understanding of the rules in many other countries in the world. And frankly, I think our governments could have done a lot better putting these, these drone regulations together. I have seen so much frustration, utter confusion, and even anger expressed towards existing regulations, and, and the recent FAA remote ID proposal just made things worse. It's time for a change. But rather than just rant about it, what I've done is put together a comprehensive set of rules that I think are sensible and more balanced. Everything from registration to airspace, from flying over people to beyond visual line of sight. Think about it as Don, Don's rules if I ran the circus. And these rules aren't just for Canadian drone pilots. These, this proposal is actually, with a little bit of fine tuning and customization, could be applicable anywhere in the world. So let's have a look at what I've put together. Before I go any further, I want to emphasize that these proposed rules are for discussion purposes only. They're not real. I'm a Canadian drone pilot. I respect and follow the regulations in Canada. So please understand and follow the real regulations for your country, wherever that might be. To cover Don's drone rules properly, we'll take a few videos. But in this one, I'm going to summarize my view of the drone ecosystem first, explain the key principles that form the foundation for my rules, and then get into the structure of the rule set. Before we're done today though, I'll give you a glimpse into the kinds of rules I'm proposing, and some of them are pretty controversial. We need to start by agreeing on what I call the drone ecosystem. Firstly, I think it makes sense to differentiate our drone world by weight and the notions of sub 250 gram and over 25 kilogram and then everything in between are actually pretty good demarcation points. Equally important, I think we need to differentiate between recreational and commercial operations. Our one size fits all approach in Canada has left us with a ton of restrictions that just don't make sense for recreational flyers. I also think we must introduce a third category for cargo or passenger drones. This part of the ecosystem just in the beginning stages right now is what I think is driving many of the new proposals and it just doesn't make sense to apply the same rules all across the board. The point is that the risk associated with these two dimensions of the ecosystem is vastly different from the top left to the bottom right of this table and risk should be what drives the degree of regulation and restriction. Which gets me to the fundamental principles behind Don's rules. Firstly, I think we can all agree that safety is paramount. Secondly, accountability. It is a privilege to fly our drones, not a right. As such, I think it's critical to have certification exams and associated safety-oriented training freely available to ensure pilots understand the rules and are up to the task. Thirdly, I strongly believe that technology can and should be applied to support the regulations. Technology should prevent us from flying in no-fly zones. We need remote identification or license plates to support accountability. And we need universal air traffic awareness to ensure separation of manned aircraft and drones. Finally, balance. As I said a few minutes ago, there must be a balance between risk and restrictions and the type of operation and the degree of regulation. While we're on the subject of principles, let's touch on what notions are not principles of my rules. I absolutely do not believe that drones must be treated in the same way as manned aircraft, nor that drone pilots must be treated like aircraft pilots. These notions have somehow made their way into the Canadian drone regulations, leading to weirdly extreme restrictions like no alcohol 12 hours prior to flying. Believe me, I'm not advocating drinking and droning, but it makes no sense that the law allows you to drive a car a couple of hours after having a drink, but you can't fly a drone at your cottage if you've had a single beer within 12 hours. 
we need balance. And equally, it makes no sense that drone pilots need to understand things like runway numbering schemes or aviation weather forecasts. You also won't find me advocating massive bureaucracy as a means to greater safety. It just doesn't work. Best practices like checklists or only flying above certain temperatures are great, but they should not be embedded into regulations. And complicated rules, which is typically what comes out of government committees, they don't work. Nobody understands them, few people can follow them, and they can't be enforced. Finally, there seems to be the notion in some of our regulations that in order to have safety, you need to give up freedom. I don't think that's true, and you won't see that in Don's rules. Okay, let's get into the rules themselves. I've grouped Don's drone rules into four categories shown here. Registration and pilot certification, airspace management, proximity to people, bystanders really, and lastly, a set of pragmatic regulations focused on safety. And the blue thing in the middle? Well, let's just call that artistic license. I have follow-up videos in this series going into each of these areas in detail, but for now, let me give you a peek at what's going on inside my shiny little head. In the registration and certification area, I'll explain why I think remote ID is actually a good idea, just not in the way the American FAA is proposing it. Under airspace management, I'm proposing that recreational droning should be allowed in controlled airspace. Oops, I think that was the sound of an air traffic controller falling out of her chair. Don't worry, there's method to my madness. Proximity to people. I really think this is overly regulated and shouldn't require superpowers or parachutes on your drone. You'll have to wait to see what I mean. And in the operating rules group, I actually propose doing away with VLOS. There we go again, and replacing it with something more practical and probably safer. There we have it, an introduction to Don's drone rules, a practical set of rules, globally applicable and sensibly balanced. Let's dive into the details in the next video. See you soon.